Hello, I'm Doug, and this is the Taste and Sensibility channel. And you have arrived at episode 12 of Fresh Cheeses, which is going to be cream cheese and Neufchatel. And all this cheese business comes about because I got interested in this book, The Book of Cheese by Liz Thorpe. And she describes a gateway introduction method to lots of types of cheeses. And we are only looking at the mozzarella gateway represented by this photo here. But we are doing one today that's not real. She does not list in her mozzarella gateway, but we know it is a fresh cheese of this variety because it's high moisture, rindless, very perishable, and tastes and smells like milk. And those are her uh, defining terms and we recognize this and that's what we're tasting today. So I have some toasted bagels here that I cut up. I've got Philadelphia brand cream cheese which is the uh, market leader in the US. I have a cream cheese like material called Neufchatel which is made with milk and not cream. And then I have two flavored cream cheeses also Philadelphia. Chime and onion and strawberry and we'll be going through those. So I would think if you're a young person or have kids, you'd probably buy tubs. And if you're an old person like me, you're probably used to buying these little bricks that are wrapped up in foil, which is very inconvenient. But when I chop it off in little logs, it comes out the right size for my bagels. So I like that. So before we get into these tastings, let me remind you to like this video down below, leave a comment or question, subscribe to the channel, and click that bell to get notified when the new videos come out every Monday and Thursday. So I'm going to take my first piece of bagel here and spread a slab of the regular cream cheese on it. And this is how I usually eat cream cheese, although it certainly is an ingredient for lots of other things. People make cheesecakes, people use it as a spread after Dosing it with several herbs, spices, fruits, all sorts of stuff. So I'm going to taste this. That's an everything bagel. It's very well toasted. It certainly has a dairy taste. It goes really well with bread and toasted bread and toasted grains that you might find in crackers. So this ends up on our hors d'oeuvre tables all over the place. So I don't detect any tartness or sour character. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put on some smoked salmon, which is often part of my routine. So this is a good, uh, protein containing, dairy tasting, spread for something. So a bagel and cream cheese could be enough for breakfast. And you would get protein, grains, all sorts of things. And now I've got fish. So let's go on with this addition. That's a great combination of tastes. Cream cheese, the creaminess, dairiness, and the graininess of the bagel, and the salty fishiness of the salmon are like three centers of flavor that are really combining well and melding well. So I usually get uh, plain bagels, but they were out, so I got everything, which is my second choice, but it leaves all specks and seeds everywhere. So I'm always cleaning these things off. So on to the next one, which is just a no cream version of cream cheese. So it's made from milk. They advertise the fewer calories and I have not yet opened this foil pouch or brick to demonstrate how awkward and clumsy it is. The people buying uh, tubs are on the right path for lots of things. Just I avoid the tubs because so many of the things are really spreads. Whipped up with air or uh, diluted with water to make them 
spreadable and then they claim fewer calories than a serving which is an administrative sleight of hand or a marketing sleight of hand which I don't think much of so I kind of ignore that whole part of the cream cheese world so a new slab of this looks a little less thick consistency is squishier oh, it might be too much for one bagel part one bagel half, but here goes. Then I removed a little. So let's check out the Neufchatel. You can correct my pronunciation if you want. Very much the same character. I don't detect much difference. I can tell it's not quite as fatty in the mouth and not quite as creamy, but it's it's a very small difference, especially on a bagel like this. Toasted with seeds. I might just switch to that. Okay. Oh, I've got a little salmon on there. May as well throw it on, throw on all of it. So I've seen this in recipes, but it's never been a big part of the grocery section. I don't find it in a lot of stores around here. Only Walmart, believe it or not. Same great combination with the bread and the salmon. And I don't really miss the uh, the milk fat, the butter fat, the cream that is not in this compared to this. So the redo is not a, a bad idea at all because I was kind of going off on a rant about these being spreads and not cream cheeses so they can't call it cream cheese because they put too many additives in these things are just milk cream salt cheese culture and a couple of gums or thickeners to make the consistency right in their eyes so and these have lots of added stuff and water and the you know the fat and protein that make it up to the level of these guys because they've put in things that aren't cheese or milk or cream. So I'm going to go ahead and do the chive and onion flavored spread. I'm going to switch to just a plain bagel. Not that anything was wrong with the everything bagels, but the I don't think the strawberry went with the onion pieces that were in the everything bagel all that well. It didn't bother me. It just didn't go. But here we have chive and onion. Cream cheese spread. And it smells kind of oniony. So it tastes good. They say they put in uh, dried onions and dried chives. Definitely getting the onion on the on the palate. Not so sure the chives are coming through. Perhaps a bit, but the onion is stronger. It's a very much more moister, wetter, thinner mouthfeel than these guys are. It 
So the flavor is good, but the texture is squishier and softer than a cream cheese. So the savory one is good. Chive and onion. Next we have here strawberry, which I thought would be sweet and this is made from milk, cream, sugar, strawberry puree, whey protein, concentrate, dried strawberries for pieces, salt, modified food starch, carrot bean gum, color, so a bunch of things in our food. I'm lifting out a nice spread and putting it on this nice toasty bagel, plain bagel. And it smells like strawberry. I can edit this out. Well, I guess I should put the lid on before I start in. Put this back on the little stand. There, it smells like strawberry. I can smell it from here. It's a strong strawberry flavor. And sweeter than you'd expect a cream cheese to be. And again, the texture is more wet, more liquid, more pliable than you'd expect a cream cheese to be. So it's good. The flavor is good, but it doesn't have any dairy notes. I don't taste any cream and milk anymore. Maybe that's a goal. But it doesn't appeal to me that much. So somebody's buying it, or it wouldn't be there at Walmart. So not so dairy-like. It may be some of the same thing. Yeah. The onion was strong. It's kind of onion and chive on a background. It could have been dairy, or it could have just been blank. I'm not sure. The dairy notes were strong, but I, I won't say it was devoid of dairy notes. So when they put in the flavors, they usually go all the way on that flavor. Nothing's ever subtle or nuanced. And I think the dairy pretty much gets wiped out. So just my view on these spreads and things. So that's cream cheese and North Churchill and spreads. All prompted by Liz Thorpe's The Book of Cheese. And I'll have links to this book and uh, some of her videos down below. And this is not in her mozzarella gateway of fresh cheeses, but we know that it is one of those things. And a reminder to like and comment and subscribe and click that bell to get notified. Come back for the next one of these and that's all for now.